All right, guys. Thank you. Hey, welcome back to my channel where we will talk about some of the, my photographs, be either portraits, be photojournalism, street photography, things that I do. Eventually we'll talk about uh, filming as well. I have done uh, a lot of that lately as well. And today I'm going to talk about one of the portraits that I did that I'm very happy about. It's from Pelé, soccer legend football legend if you're in, the, in Europe and King Pele I did this I did this shooting four years ago for ESPN magazine it was a little bit before the World Cup 2014 so it was exactly exactly like four years ago April April 2014 and it was very interesting because at first they told me I would have 30 minutes with him but Experience tells me that that's very rare to have 30 minutes with a celebrity, you know. You always end up with less than that. And what I had actually was maybe 10 minutes with him. And here I have the sequence for you guys, right? And I have another sequence that during the day ESPN TV from the US, they were making a documentary on him, so I'm, I'm there, I'm helping out, just looking, waiting for my chance. And then when my moment came, I had already the, the white background here set up, my, my mobile studio, per se. And then I say, welcome Mr. Pelé, let's start. And here I started. Back then I was using the Canon 5D Mark III with the 2470 2.8 lens. That's my go-to lens for any portrait situation, especially studio, right? And as you can see, that's just one fun fact. I started at hour 1357, and then I'm finished at hour 1402.55. So, five to six minutes that was my time with him at the white background okay so then you have your five minutes with a legend of a celebrity and there's like 30 people behind you and you have to deliver right but let's talk about pressure but he is just the nicest guy and this is probably the one guy that has been most photographed in the world if not the most photographed person definitely one of the i don't know top 10 so He's super relaxed about it. He, he enjoys the camera and he will do anything you ask. Almost literally. He's just a cool guy. You know, and I'm here, I have five minutes only and I have to break the ice a little. There's all these people behind me. I say, hey, and usually he comes with this attitude, which is big smile with his trademark, right? If you, if you live in Brazil, if you, I mean, you've seen his this smile a thousand times before you were 12 years old. So that's how present his image is in this country. And I want that, of course I want the smile. That's, that's what he's famous for, you know, that's, that's the iconic image of him. But when I go into a portrait, and this is the homework you have to do, you have to study, you have to look for all the portraits that that person has already taken, right? And I had, I had one idea like, man, I'm gonna photograph Pelé, but how can I make a unique photo out of this, you know, something that, I mean, everybody, all the big photographers photographed this guy and, and now it's my chance, that's amazing, and it's for a major magazine, an international magazine, ESPN, so, wow, that's so cool, it's my, my chance. And then I thought, maybe, you know, I had, I had this idea that, I don't know if he already made a portrait at holding a football, and I'm like, well, let's, let's do some research. And I did, and then I didn't find, I didn't find any, at least not on a very quick Google search. I didn't find any photo of him holding the ball the way I wanted. He was, of course, he, he, he had taken portraits holding a football, but not the way I wanted. So, but my editor, 
my boss for this job, he, he asked me a very specific uh, portrait. He just wanted him looking like this to the camera, smiling. And he wanted another one of him doing like this, which is another of his trademarks. And I like, and that one he made, I don't know, 300, 300 times that photo. And of course I have to deliver that because they're paying me for those two pictures. But I, I still want to go a little further and make something unique out of this opportunity. And then I'm there, I started here, you know, and he's looking at the camera. Then I say, hey, just now don't smile. Remember, we talked about it. I, I, I think when, you, when the person is not smiling at the camera, bring some, you know, it, it provokes another level to make the photo more interesting, you know? A smile, we were so used to uh, somebody smiling at the camera. It's so much imprinted in the back of our minds that it doesn't, it doesn't touch us anymore, you know? But then when, when a person stops smiling, all of a sudden it's, it's uh, something special, you know? And you start to question like, hey, why is he looking at me? Why is he not smiling? What is he thinking? What, what, what are the feelings involved in here? So this is, this is this is where I wanna this is where I wanna navigate, you know. This 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 is, this is the what interests interests me. And here, talking about a little bit about technical, ISO 100. I'm using the the last part of my zoom, which is the 70 millimeter. Uh, aperture eight, so I have a very crispy. You know, I'm I'm using the best part of the lens when it's on f8 or f11 f 5.6 this is the range the optical range of the camera where you have the best performance and f8 it's just uh, uh nothing goes wrong you have you're using the best performance of your optics so and i don't i don't run very important when you're going to do photographs uh especially if you don't have a much latitude for for mistakes with an f8 you make sure that you have everything in focus, you know, from the tip of his nose to the back here to his ear, everything is in focus, everything is sharp, and that's important. We could do this 2.8, 1.4, and, and have a very selective focus only in the eye, and then have the nose out of focus and the ears out of focus. That's very cool to do. But if you have like five minutes with somebody, you cannot make mistakes, you know? And sometimes it, it, it feels that it's in sh sharp when you're looking in a viewfinder. And then when you bring to the computer later on, you see on a bigger screen, you're like, oh no, I missed it. The focus is a little bit off. So I don't want that. I want everything sharp. And I really want the crispy look, you know, his sparrows in his skin. So I'm going to F8. I have my Octabank here. You can see the reflection on his eye. Always the eyes tell whatever you, light you're using. And then I have another, another, we call this light here, we call it a kicker, right? It's just a, a, a light coming from behind and an angle, a 45 millimeter angle of, sorry, a 45 degrees angle. If, if, if it was coming from directly behind, it's not a kicker anymore, it's just a, 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 a background light it's coming a little bit to the top so it's a topper light but at an angle the light comes like this and do like this and then you have this very distinctive look which is very silvery so this is a kicker the light comes at an angle 45 degrees and do like this right and whenever it does this it always gives this a little more silvery look than here, for example, right? So this is the kicker light. I'm, I'm gonna have versions of this with and without. This also my editor said, hey, we want a portrait with a kicker light. Okay, I can do that. Very simple, but you need to know what it is. So I'm continuing, you know, hey, please, can you look this way? Can you look that way? Can you smile? Can you not smile? And he's going, I have my kicker light here open up a little now I'm I'm still in the 70 I just go back a little maybe two three steps back my shutter 160 aperture still at 8 I'm not gonna once I have that set I'm not gonna mess with that anymore you know 
crossing arms. I always try to avoid it. People always want to do it first. So you do it and they make it comfortable, but then you say, okay, let's try something else. I, I, got, I got to make the photos that I, I need some, you know, I need a lot of photos here as much as I can, but I'm ready thinking of the one that I really want. And this is it. I get a ball. I brought this ball with me and I say, hey Pelé, can you please hold the ball? And he holds the ball. Now, treat it as if it was your girlfriend. And then I do the gesture like this. And then he understands immediately and he likes it. And then he brings the ball in this position. And then he does like this. And with the smile, he, he says something like, I remember he said, uh, thank you for everything. And that was so cool. If you, if you happen to enjoy football, that was so cool to just see that. And here is the version without and with, right? With the kicker light and without. I like without more. I think, you know, I'm always for minimalist approach in lighting unless it's an advertisement and unless the art director really tells you to we need this and we want really splashy all lights all over otherwise i like this just one light source my octabank coming from here 45 degree angle and that's it that makes it beautiful i have my white background being being lit by two other lights just to make it pop but the light that is doing everything is just one octabank right here. And then here I have the options on and off. And now here's the, the image that I really like. This one with him serious. And then here with the little smile. That's the one that he said, thank you for everything. And I think this is the one that I enjoy the most because now we have this, this smile we see that there's an affection going on here, you know, we have the ball, the light is simple, it's strong, and it's there to help tell the story. It's not stealing a little bit. I think here it's a little distractive, it's too much going on. But here it's just balanced, it's nice. You concentrate in the moment, you concentrate on him, and I think this is an example of a, a very strong portrait, right? And I'm always going for what's the iconic portrait that I can make. Something that 30 years from now, I'm gonna look it back and say, wow, this is still a very strong portrait. And, and that was it. Look at that. After that, I'll go back to do a couple more and we're finished. This is the last one. So, in a space of five minutes, 30 people behind me, very pressured. The press manager saying, okay, you're done, you're done, let's go, let's go, let's move, move on. But then I got this one, and this one is the one that came out in the magazine. Um, and that's the one I'm very happy about it. And eventually, a couple of years later, he even, uh, he made an, uh, an auction in London with a lot of his uh, memorabilia and they chose to buy this one to be on the catalog, on the official catalog. So if you, if you have the official catalog of, of that auction, which is a huge book like this big, and that's the photo where he introduces himself. So I was very happy with that. All right, that's it. If you have questions about this specific portrait, Please send, send them and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope you have enjoyed it and that's it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and come back for more. Thank you.